opportunity to welcome you all to the class presentation of grade 2, Unfolding of Human Journey. We begin our presentation by seeking the blessing from the Almighty. Here's grade 2 coin, presently before you a soulful prayer. <laughs> from apes. As evolution continued, their brains got bigger and jaws became smaller. The feet were similar to modern humans and hands capable of holding tools. At this point, scientists named them Homo, the scientific term for human. Man, as we see today, appeared around 40,000 years ago. Their brain, much larger their body lighter and less muscular. This helped them to adapt. A series of slow changes in a living thing from which it develops to its current state or from a long period of time is called evolution. The year is 2021. Humanity has spread to cover almost every continent has mapped every corner of the world and has even made its first tentative steps beyond our planet. More than half the world's population live in cities or similar urban environments, marked by complicated hierarchies and that rely on agriculture and vast administration to survive. Yet in the grand scheme of history, these complex societies came into existence only recently. Now, let me tell you about the forces of ancient people. You might be wondering, what are these forces? Well, I will tell you what they are. They are clothing, communication, commutation, and last but not the civilization. So, let's get started. Today we live a better life in concrete flats and facilities with TV, videos, schools and colleges. We have a variety of new to 
nutritional foods and better means of communication and transportation but can you imagine a life without this facility for us a life where there is no big society no house to live no finger licking food no clothes to wear etc how does it feel to listen yes you are right we are talking about wildlife and this was the life of none others than our ancestors who used to live in the jungle and lived a very hard life let me take you through the hardship of early human being human was evolved in africa and much of human evolution of god on that continent early humans lived in jungle and were afraid of bigger and stronger wild animals earlier they had no house to live in and they spent their times on trees or hid themselves behind the bushes but it couldn't provide them security from wild animals rain winter and sun heat so they started living in caves they typically chose to live as gatherers or hunters there was no use of iron or stone in the early days which gradually came into use with the advent of meat they used to be in groups or small bands to counter wild animals in early days human life was very hard they spent their life in caves wrapping animal skin and tree leaves over their body and hunting animals for food they started using stones with sharp edges to hunt animals this was the beginning of stone age slowly they learned to shape stone they broke the stone by putting one stone on the other and it was later used for various purposes like hunting animals scraping the skin of animals to make clothes cut meat etc constant danger from wild animals diseases and hunger so they live in group and they uh, wander from one place to another the uh, search of food they lived nomadic life the invention of agriculture and animal husbandry changed the course of history the agricultural revolution marked the transition in human history of small nomadic bands of hunter gatherers to larger and agriculture settlement and early civilization stone age human in the other parts of the world also began to practice agriculture domesticating animals made the hard physical labor of farming easy while their milk and meat added variety to the human diet and by the way what's your favorite diet Let me ask my friend Shorya Walia. Hey Shorya, what's your favorite food? Oh, I love to eat chole bhature. Wow, that's great. But do you know that early humans ate raw flesh as they did not know how to cook their food? Eating flesh without cooking it? How is that possible? Yes now let me take you to the time when they learned how to cook their food so 
basically they have seen a broken out fire in the jungle several times but they don't know how to make it or they could use it rather they were freed of it just like animals with time they felt that they could use it to keep them warm in winter but making fire was a big problem so they decided to keep the whole jungle fire burning and add some dry grass and leaves to it one day they saw sparks coming out from rubbing stones which were rolling down the hills then they got the idea to make fire by rubbing two stones this was a really great discovery as now they were able to make fire whenever required with time they learned other uses of fire too they could light up their caves and protect their family from the cold and wild animals they also came to know that the roasted food was much softer and tastier than the raw one this was the beginning of cooked food this was the second great milestone in man's progress amazing that's great to know nowadays you can have delicious food in restaurant as well as at homes and this is because of the developed civilization here we and with the first sea you must have bought your clothes from some supermarket or a boutique but have you ever wondered why you need just clothes let me take you to the time when clothes were not fashion all the time there was a time when having no clothes at all was the in thing so we don't really know when that was and when that went out of fashion we also don't exactly know when human beings started wearing clothes but once they invented clothing there has been no looking back early humans originated from africa where the weather was mostly pleasant and you could actually survive with no clothes on we humans have always been an adventurous bunch and then what we did is started venturing out of the africa where it really got too cold especially in winters so what scientists suggest is that humans invented clothing to protect themselves from bitter cold which actually makes some sense early humans covered themselves with leaves and twigs unlike animals they skin was not enough a discovery that led to the birth of clothing instead of just wrapping the skin around them they started to make holes in it to put the head and arms through the idea of obtaining wool is the one of the oldest fiber Later on, humans started cultivating the cotton crops. In this one, civilization is one of the oldest civilization to cultivate cotton. The fabric was worn as a drape. But how did early humans make clothes? Isn't it a good question? 
They made clothes from fibers that were obtained from plants and animals. Flax is the oldest fiber in human history. It was obtained from the inner bark of the flax plant through spinning and weaving. Flax fiber was converted into linen fabric, a fabric that was very popular in ancient times. In addition to this, they also started making clothes from the plants like reed, palm and papyrus along with linen. Yes, you can say that they just made a vital role in the invention of clothing. Weather! Hmm! December has just started and it's really very freezing today. Let me have a cup of tea. Mmm, refreshing. With this cup of tea, I remember the story of how society was privileged with silk. Let's take a trip to China where silk was first invented. In China, a long time ago, a Chinese empress was sipping some hot tea under a mulberry tree. Then, something fell into a cup of tea. I really wondered what was that. It is said it looked like a weird wiggling blob. The Empress kept on watching for longer. What happened inside the teacup? Don't be so impatient, Paul. The blob started unraveling into a long thin thread. So, the Empress ordered her royal physicians to find what this was. And after much research, they found that it was surprisingly strong thread that we can make into really smooth, shiny and fashionable clothes out of it. So this way, it was invented. Gradually, the stitching started after the invention of the needle. It at first needles and made up of bones and ivory. The ancient Chinese went step ahead and figured out how to make clothes in different colors. They just used some colors extracted from plants and applied them to the clothes. This way the Chinese discovered the concept of dyeing much before most of the world. In the past few centuries, humans have started making synthetic fibers. The invention of machinery for skinning, spinning, weaving and stitching make easy to manufacture clothes on large scale. Fashion has been growing through constant evolution since centuries. After the 20th century, we had all the jeans, the t-shirts and all of that making a big appearance. However, the purpose of clothing is still the same. So Prakriti did you get acquainted with the journey of how clothes were invented? Yes, Vivan, it was indeed an interesting piece of information and definitely I will share this with my sister today. With this, we come to an end of second C, that is different phases of clothing. Hi, Johan. Can you hear me? Oh yes, I can hear you. Samai and Johan, are you both playing any game? What? Game? If it's a game, I am really enjoying it. It actually seems like a telephone. Hmm, is this how phones used to be a long time ago? Well, 
not exactly like this but yes this way communication started for long distances over a period of time what communication johan aren't you aware of what communication is communication is exchanging information or ideas between two or more people it's nearly impossible to go through a day without communication yes that's true we communicate with people to share our thoughts ideas and information we use various means of communication that help us to convey messages to others let me take you all through the communication of yesterday today and tomorrow a long long time ago before there were modern technologies we humans tried out our hands on different ways of communication thanks to technology now it's so easy to communicate with our friends we can decide to have an ice cream party and in seconds get in touch with everyone we know we can connect with our friends using a computer if you have a cell phone you could use its texting technology to type out a message or you could use an old fashioned innovation such as a rotary telephone to call your friends and ask them to come over but what if the power went out and you couldn't use a computer or if you don't have a charge cell phone without modern technology how could you give the information about your ice cream party to your friends you could call your friends to your party by flashlights by clicking the flashlights on and off in certain patterns you can also send complex messages in code the best way to tell your friends about your asking party is face to face whatever method you use to communicate be sure the message sent is interpreted correctly by the receiver the earliest moments of known human history that the company's ancient rituals spiritual gatherings and social events as a conduit of trance expression performance and interaction dance became infused in our nature from the earliest moments of our existence without a doubt dancing remains one of the most expressive forms of communication that we know let us have a glance at how they used to express their happiness by dancing
the most different form of dance I have ever seen. And yes, you are right my dear friend. Dance is one form of communication. One can express his or her feeling through dance. Let us throw some lights on other way of communication. Teaches mankind has dreamed of better communication. In the beginning, a gesture got our attention. Developing a language took 2 million years. Communicating over long distances requires ingenuity. We invented pictograms to launch the age of written communication. One such example is cave drawings. Cave or rock paintings are paintings painted on cave or rock walls and ceilings, usually dating to prehistoric times. The most common thing in European cave are large wild animals such as bison, horror, Horses, aurochs and deers and tracing by human hands as well as abstract patterns. Pigeons. Can pigeons send messages? How could they find the destination? How was it possible? Were they so intelligent? Wait, wait. The upcoming pack will answer your question. Pigeons were extensively used for long distance communication due to their natural homing ability. This made it possible for people to send messages to others. The message would be written on a very thin piece of a paper and put it into a small tube. It was then tied to the pigeon's leg or around the neck. Pigeon would then be allowed to fly back home to deliver the message. Slowly and gradually, we sought faster and more reliable messengers. Pony Express From ancient times, things have been using human messengers to relay messages. Pony Express was the first of its kind mail service delivering messages, mails, newspapers, and small packages by horseback using small relay stations. This was regarded as the first courier station. We send letters to other people by post. We write the letter, put it inside the envelope, place the stamp on it and write the address of the recipient. Then we drop the sealed letter in the letter box. Then the postman comes and collects the letters from the letter box. Then he goes to the post office and the letters are sorted to different places. Then he delivers it to the address written on the envelope. Telegraphy was the greater breakthrough in the field of communication. Although the small signals and flags were different from the telegraphy, but the harnessing of electricity in the late 19th century gave birth to electric telegraphy. Telephone, antenna, real time communication was confined to diplomatic purposes or for broadcasting. Still, telegraph was the fastest one to one communication used by common people. Thanks to Graham and Bell, in 1876, Alexander Graham and Bell invented a telephone. A telephone is a very, is a very common device used to, to, to communicating over a distance. A per, with a telephone, a person can almost talk instantly with someone on the other side of the world. Radio. Radio is the way of sending sounds and other information through the air. In modern society, radios are common technology in the car and in the home.
The history of the radio is a fascinating one that changed how the world connected and communicated from distances both far and near. The earliest radio telephone was replaced by those of the radio, cinema and television. Then come the face of computer room which was replaced by Boston and Portable One. In parallel, the incarnation of computer appeared and also evolved the mobile phone. Then comes the face of email. It's a way of sending written letter or message across the internet. Over the last 10 to 12 years, social websites become more and more popular. They can also be used for real-time communication and simple information sharing. One of the latest mediums for information sharing is now light. Till now, we saw changes in civilization, clothing and communication. Now let's go to the last C, that is communication, and see how only human beings used to travel from one place to another, and after how many stages and struggles we have reached the stage of electric vehicles. Come on, fasten your seat belt to have a bumpy ride. For humans to travel longer distance with animals? Of course not. That is the reason the people made two or four wheeler vehicles that can be pulled by small animals and people. Pasaj, come, let me take you the time when people made lots of inventions in the field of transportation. Invention of the wheel. The most significant and important invention of that time was the wheel. So, here's the funny thing. The wheel wasn't used for traveling at first. The first wheel was used to make clay pots and vessels. But soon humans realized that they could be used for something much better. They realized that Round things could move on uneven ground much more easily than cities. Small pieces of tree trunks which were round in shape were fitted below the carts. Now the carts could move easily on uneven ground. Thus the wheel was invented. 
Land travel and transportation of heavy goods became easier and faster. So now people could transport huge and heavy things over long distances. Hence, we can say that the invention of the wheel helped people travel faster and farther than possible on foot. It has also made it possible to transport big loads. The first kind of wheel pickers were carts to wheel and wagons for wheel. They were drawn by like animal, donkeys, horses and ducks. Bicycles and motorbikes. The first bicycle did not have pedals and the rider had a steer it by pushing his or her feet along the ground. Development were made in the following years. For example, gear and engine were added. Bicycles then become motorized in later years. When petrol engine invent was invented, motorcycle was invented. Since it was difficult to travel for large number of people together, the thought of another another invention in the field of commuting gave rise to steel steam engine. Thank you. Then came a major invention called the steam engine. The source of fuel was water. So they would just boil water with coal. Do you know what you would get when you boil water with coal? You get steam. They use this steam to move the machines. The first major use of steam engines was developed in 1804 for trains. Since the invention of the steam engine, many improvements have been made to make it smaller and smaller in automobile. This was called the automobile. It had a movable set of wheels. It didn't need a railway line. So if people didn't want to drive as far as the other side of the country, they need not have walked, need not have gone by train. They could just use their automobiles. The steam engine wasn't just used by roads. It took to the water too. Roads and seats then would motorize, traveling the water was much faster. Human beings inside and had land and water wasn't enough side eventually. They took to the skies. In 1900, the Wright brothers invented the first type of flying beyond world. That would take off with the help of Anchorage and then after a few meters. The best part was that you could really go far and cover long distances, thousands of kilometers in a matter of just a few hours. Steam was now replaced with petrol and diesel. What is the advantage of it? You may ask me. Automobiles started to become smaller, quicker, faster, quieter and more comfortable. We gave those automobiles a new name too. Cars. Bikes for one or two person to travel over short or longer distances. Cars for a, a little group of people for longer distances. Buses for large group of people for longer distances. Trucks for transporting goods from one place to another. In some places the weird cute three wheel cars called tuk tuks were used as taxis. Before the invention of cars and planes, Trains were the most important way to transport goods and people over long distances on land. After the age of petrol, the next fuel was electricity. Train 
Lorenz was the first vehicle to run on electricity. Then cars and bikes started picking it up. Hey Kahan, I want to share one of my experiences that shows we humans are so good at inventions. Before COVID, I went to France with my family. There we had a thrilling experience of riding on a TGV. TGV, what's that, Sharia? TGV stands for Train of Great Speed. These are very fast trains. It was a, it was fun to ride on that. It's amazingly such a huge thing today. Since the day we human being, our ancestors evolved. Not only we have observed the change in our lifestyle, connotation, and all, but the environment has changed a lot. That day, the earth is undergoing. resources efficiently. We waste energy, we waste water and hence we are facing so many problems nowadays. Let's take a pledge to save our mother earth. It is our privilege to propose a vote of thanks. We extend our heartfelt gratitude to our respected principal, Mr. Tsuza Sir, for his motivation and support always. Thank you. We thank Mrs. Anagha Pathak, the CBSE coordinator, for giving us an opportunity through this class presentation. Thank you, ma'am. We are thankful to Mr. Tika Nagpal, the assistant coordinator.
coordinator and to all our mentor teachers for their continuous support and guidance. Thank you. We are grateful to our dear parents for their encouragement and support to make these videos. This would not have been possible without you. Thank you. We thank the audience for watching the show. Now please rise for the national anthem. Janagana mana adhinayaka jayahe Bharat bhagya vidhata Punjab Sindh Gujarat Maratha Dravida Utkala Vanga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Utchala Jaladhita Ranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Ashish Maage Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Janagan Mangan Dayak Jaya He Bharat Bhagya Vidhata Jaya He Jaya He